Hello and welcome to Art with Bazaar. I'm Aisha Shehmir and today we are at NYUED to find out exactly how the institution is shaping the region's art scene and welcoming all forms of creative expression. Now we're here at the Arts Center with the founding executive artistic director, Bill Bregan. Now Bill, one of the main missions of the center is to bring tradition and innovation together through local and global talent. What are some of the ways the seventh season themed now and into the future achieving this? Well, I think one of the first things that we uh, try to do is to commission new work. So we are really looking at investing in the creation and development of pieces that actually speak to that theme, which is such an important theme here in the UAE. Uh, we also work with a lot of artists who in their own work are dealing with those issues. A, a number of musicians, for example, who are working with traditional music, but also really trying to innovate within the form, honor the heritage, but also honor heritage, not as something that's fixed, but heritage is something that's always living and evolving. And I think that in a place like the UAE, particularly in the year that we celebrate the 50th uh, Jubilee, that idea of really being aware of kind of where kind of where culture comes from and how it continues to evolve uh, is something that we really try to address through the uh, through the works that we program. And the center has launched a new artist development program called NUMU, which means growth in Arabic. Right. And the idea is to provide performing artists with opportunities that they might not otherwise have. Can you tell us a little bit more about this year long initiative and how it aims to benefit a whole community of artists? Sure, NUMU was started because there's an enormous amount of talent here in the UAE. Uh, but there the artists don't always have as many opportunities to perform their work publicly, to develop. And as an artist, one of the ways you learn the most is by doing it. Uh, and one of the ways that you learn is also by bringing your work on tour, which also then provides, uh, it really helps to provide uh, financial stability. It helps you to really develop a career. And for the UAE, the artists who are based here really tell perspectives about what life is like here in the UAE in a way that the rest of the world doesn't necessarily get to hear as often. There are not that many artists uh, from the Emirates who are traveling internationally. Uh, so we created NAMU, uh, we, uh, we got support from the U.S. mission to the UAE who are very interested in helping to support the nation's mission of growing the creative economy. Uh, and we are looking at all of the fundamentals of how do you build a sustainable career, both for people who want to work right here at home and also people who want to tour. They're looking at things like how do you develop your artistic brand? How do you build your team as you go from being a, basically a DIY startup as, as an artist of one to you need a manager or an agent or a lawyer or, or creative producers? Uh, how do you negotiate contracts? What sh should you be looking for? How do you, uh, how do you budget your work? Uh, how do you think about touring when there's a whole world out there? Where do you start when you want to tour the world? So we're really trying to think through that whole process of what does it mean to be a working artist and help the artist to develop uh, all the professional skills. We had an open call. Uh, we originally planned for 10 slots. We hope that in five years uh, for the 50th anniversary, we will have supported 50 new artists. Uh, and we got so many people who applied, we actually expanded it. So we've got 13 artists. They represent really broad range of, uh, of art forms. We've got spoken word poets. We've got musicians. We've got theater artists. Uh, we've got people who are interested in musical theater and experimental theater. So uh, it's very broad in terms of the discipline. Uh, and it's also very broad in terms of the backgrounds. We've got Emiratis. We've got people who are Filipino, people who are Indian, people who are American, people from uh, Egypt and Palestinians. And it's very, very diverse as the UAE is. Uh, and one thing that we really looked for was artists who are not only working for themselves, but who are hubs for other communities. We want what they learn to not only benefit themselves, but we're looking at people who can really translate that to grow each of their own, each of their own artistic communities, uh, which is a way that the work filters out. Oftentimes, people can feel very intimidated by the art world, and these are some of the barriers the Art Center aims to remove by nurturing creative self-expression in all forms, whether it's through poetry or dance or film and theater. Why do you think the democratization of art is so important today? Well, 
I guess fundamentally, I have a belief uh, that art is essential. Art, uh, there's, there's, a, uh, there's a manifesto that has been on the wall of my office in almost every job that I've had that I always go back to from Bread and Puppet Theater Company from Vermont. And it's the Why Cheap Art Manifesto. And essentially it says art is not luxury. Art is food. You can't eat it, but it feeds you. And I think that we all saw during the past two years of the pandemic, Art was essential for people's survival. It was essential for people just to process all of the emotions, all the thoughts. Uh, it got people going day in, day out. Uh, and so fundamentally, I think it comes from this belief that art belongs to everybody uh, and art is foundational. I grew up in the way that I've developed this passion, I was going to performances almost every single day in New York. I was not, uh, it was not uncommon for me to go to two events in a day and sometimes three. Uh, and so then it just becomes a habit. Uh, and it's, are you going out for dinner? Are you going to go to the beach? Or are you going to go see a theater piece? Uh, and so I'm really committed to that. Uh, and then I think the other thing uh, is that there is an intimidation that happens with contemporary art and people don't always trust their own instincts. They don't always trust uh, their own responses uh, and they feel like, oh, if I'm not an expert in this, then how can I have an opinion? Uh, and my feeling is you can always learn more and you'll appreciate something in a different way. If you've got a background, you might pick up certain references. But first and foremost, people's initial response to a work uh, is really important and really valid. Uh, and so a few years ago, we also really started uh, leaning into our tagline, come curious, leave inspired. And even in our first season, I wrote a letter to the audience that said, I'm inviting you to come. I want you to come with an open mind. And just because we decided to put it in our season doesn't mean you have to like it, but I want you to come and I want you to experience it. I want you to think about it. I want to think about the questions that it raises. And then you can like it, you can not like it, and that's fine. You can sort of like it, uh, but you can also think about what conversations does it open? What is it getting me to think about? What can I talk about after the show? Besides, was it good? Was it bad? but also how was it made? How was, you know, what was in the lighting? What was in the stage design? Uh, what was the intention? Did the, the artist do it? And how does it relate to the other aspects of my life? I think for me, the idea of taking the arts off a pedestal and demystifying them and making them something that everybody, because, it, because as I said, it is fundamental. Everybody has access to it and I want people to, I think, own that that sense of experience that if they if they watch a performance that the emotions that they feel the thoughts that go through their mind those are valid responses uh, and then kind of grow from there so what can you tell us about the center's contribution to the future of the art ecosystem in the region well i think that one of the things that really drew me here uh, has been the the plans for the Sariq Cultural District and for the UAE as a whole. And the UAE is very good about really projecting where do, where do we want to be at 2030? Where do we want to be at 2050? And what's exciting is that in all of that identity about the country as it evolves is that the arts has really been prioritized. And the, to be here and to be here at, at New York University on Sadia, down the block from the Louvre, down the block from Manarat al Sadia, down the block from Berkeley Abu Dhabi, down the block from the future Sheikh Zayed National Museum, the future Guggenheim Museum, all of that really feeds to uh, creating the UAE as a nexus of ideas and of creativity, uh, but it's also an investment in the economy. I think you can see with all of the development around around the university on Sadia, uh, all along the beaches. Uh, it's really, it's, it's become an incredible destination, both for people from around the country, but also from the region. And, uh, and so that's also really important as a contribution. Uh, people often think of the UAE as a place that is just importing ideas and products and brands and so on. And the arts breeds innovation and creativity. Uh, and the commissioning of work that I spoke about earlier is something where we are really, we are really creating work that is from the UAE, that represents the UAE in all of its diversity, in all of its complexity, in all of its tradition and contemporary and future vision. Uh, 
And then that's something that can also really broaden the economy. And we're hearing from the Ministry of Culture and Youth about the development of the creative economy. We're hearing from the Department of Culture and Tourism in Abu Dhabi about the city being selected by UNESCO as a, as a city of music. And that investment uh, is important both psychically but also economically to, uh, to diversify the foundations of, uh, of the UAE. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, Bill. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching this episode of Art with Bazaar, and we'll see you next time.